really second only to Nebraska football in the hearts of the fans here. And tonight, they may actually be the top dog. And Cooper continues to shine the freshman in her first appearance in the national semis. Merriweather oh, off balance <laughs> with the left hand got it over. Point Huskers. Point Nebraska. Boy, the Bruins right now need to score points in bunches when Nana Merriweather's in the front row. She's in left front, so they've got three rotations to try and get a quick lead on the Huskers. I also would like to see them quicken up their offense a little bit. That's what got them here. They need to have ball control to run that fast-paced attack. The tip from Sather. Holloway looking to Pavin. And the crusher. Such a difference between game one and now. Sarah Pavin just looks in rhythm. In the first game, I said her timing looked off. Right now, there's not a jerk in her approach at all. She's got perfect timing with Holloway. 18 kills now. As Nebraska has really settled down, Heather, after that shaky game one, they hit over 300 in game three. The distribution is there from Holloway. And after uh, no kills in game one, Stars has come alive with 11 kills out of the middle now. Yeah, after defense ruled in games one and two, offense ruled in game three for Nebraska. As you said, hit 312, hit just 143 in game one. Drastic improvement. Winner advances to Saturday's national championship. The second semifinal coming up, Washington and Stanford. This is a group of heavyweights. No Cinderella's in the national semis this year. A combined 12 national championships during the NCAA era for the four teams that are here. Eight first-team All-Americans will be on the floor tonight. And the first time that four previous national champions have been in the national semi. Four to two, Nebraska looking to close it out here in game four. If UCLA does force a fifth game, it will be rally scoring to decide the match. But UCLA's got a long way to go to get there. Over the last 26 years, in an NCAA tournament play, Stanford with six championships, UCLA among the batch that has three, and Nebraska with two. Washington has one, that being the last one. Last December in San Antonio. And they put a whooping on the Huskers, and boy, you know, the Nebraska fans would love to get another shot at them this year. Everybody in town is wondering who is Omaha going to root for, Stanford or Washington? It's kind of split. A lot of people think they want a rematch with Washington. Huskers have done a nice job of taking Merriweather out of the match. A 460 hitter on the season is only hitting 200 so far tonight. The top hitter in the country. And a kill from Carter. And there's that fast offense I've been wanting to see. Katie Carter playing with that hurt finger and Nana Merriweather. 310, but a little bit below that nation's leading average. And again, I just don't think they've been able to use her as much as they'd like to. Carter and Johnson at the net. Larson out of the back row. Pancake dig from Daly. Back to Katie Carter. Nebraska goes to Mancuso. At the net. Point, Nebraska. Mancuso, point, Nebraska. In for the Huskers. And serving, Rachel Schwartz. Great defense on both sides. This time, the pancake for the Bruins keeps the ball alive. That's legal. You just can't let the ball touch the floor. It can touch any part of your body to keep it from touching the floor. Spicer to Daly out of the back. Point for the Bruins. Daly now with 11 kills on the match. Spicer back to serve. Stalls can't put it down. Chance here for the Huskers. Holloway goes to Larson. Pass shanked into the crowd off the lineman. Only her second.
second kill of the night. To go along with five blocks. She committed to come to Nebraska when she was a sophomore in high school. And has really played well in the big games during the course of her career. And she's really the one that filled in for Christina Hotelling, the ABCA National Player of the Year that's out with shoulder and knee surgery. So Jordan Larson, who was going to be a bench player, stepped in to fill that role and has carried a huge offensive burden with Hotelling out. Well, how good are they going to be next year again with Hotelling coming back? They'll have to replace Mancuso and Busboom. Larson gets another kill. 9-5 Huskers. Yes, sir. Now we see you see LA. In for the Bruins. Not a very Both teams a little bit back. flat right Rachel now, Beth. Johnson. UCLA hoping to get a little energy from Merriweather coming back onto the floor. Rachel Johnson serving. Net violation of the Bruins. Net violation called on Nebraska. UCLA. Gives the rest of the point. Cuso serving Jordan Larson. Keeps it alive. She's got over 20 digs in the match. Sather gets the kill. Got some football championships going on this weekend as well. Around the country. Montana playing Appalachian State for the uh, Division 1A subdivision. One double A. I don't, you know, <laughs> former one double A. <laughs> Montana, good team. I covered them last week. Excuse me, it's UMass. Montana UMass. lost. Boy, one week and I forget to play. <laughs> it's a little you've, scary. You've already moved into volleyball. <laughs> Woo. Division three, title on the line too. I believe Wisconsin Whitewater taking on Mount Union. Back row, Larson. UCLA was there. Merriweather. Pavin. Pop right back over. Mancuso, back to Pavin. UCLA again with the coverage. Allie Daly, point Bruins. Such a smart swing by Allie Daly. That's a way to finish a rally. So deceptive, looks cross court and then rolls it over her shoulder down the line. Daly now back to serve. UCLA looking to extend the match to a fifth game. Oscar's trying to close it out in four. Back row shattered. More NCAA semifinal volleyball on ESPNU with Washington taking on Stanford. The winners will meet right back here in front of another record-breaking crowd on Saturday night. Beth Mullins and Heather Cox joined by the most fans that have ever watched a college volleyball match here in the United States. And over 17,000. Stalls off the block. Stalls just continues to get better and better now. 12 kills for Stalls, and Nebraska's become much more balanced. That's been the key to these last two games. Rachel Holloway really using the entire court to set her offense. Rachel Johnson back on. We'll see how the Bruins do without their star on the floor. Five kills in game one, just six kills since then for Merriweather, who has seen her hitting percentage drop from 455 to under 200 now in the match. Only two other programs have won the national championship at or 
this close to their home, UCLA being one of them. Yeah, UCLA and UOP both did it back in the 80s, and Andy Banikowski said, you know, it was wonderful to win at home, but it certainly adds another element of pressure, and he said, I don't, you know, favor the situation that Nebraska's in at all with so many expectations. The tightness that we saw in the Huskers in game one has disappeared. And they have taken over the match behind the play of Sarah Pavin, 16 kills. Merriweather with 11 for UCLA. But once again, she is on in the uh, rotation that is off the floor right now. She's over on the bench. Does not play in the back. Kill by Caitlin Sather, point UCLA. Sather gets the kill for UCLA. And Merriweather hasn't had a kill for the Bruins since midway through game four. Has it been a factor like she was in game one? It is wide. Point Nebraska, UCLA. meanwhile, has really become much more balanced after Pavin carried a heavy load in game one. Stalls and Mancuso into double digit kills. Daly. She's played a solid match today. The sophomore from Grass Valley, California. And yeah, that was some impressive ball control. Two plays with Fiss getting a good offensive swing out of it. Bruins now trying to make things interesting. Spicer to Sather. Holloway goes to Larson. the back bump set and that's what I'm talking about Rachel Holloway she is a freshman playing in the biggest match of her life in game one she was a little bit predictable set the safe ball now she's in rhythm the adrenaline's flowing and she is setting some very difficult balls that was a perfect one to go back to Sarah Pavin Pavin now with 20 kills Rachel Johnson picks up the point for UCLA in for the Bruins Nana Merriweather. Nana Merriweather, Merriweather back Johnson. on the floor. Chance for UCLA now to make a move. Looking for the senior to come alive. Larson swooping in from the back, and the block the is block up from Sather and Merriweather. That's exactly what the Bruins need. Not only the point on defense, but the emotion Merriweather provides and the matchup going up against Corey Cooper, the freshman, instead of Tracy Stalls, which happens in another rotation. Pavin blocked. And again, Merriweather and Sather teaming up for the rejection. Time out, Nebraska, as UCLA is back within one. I think that should be on her audition tape. You know, her goal is to be an anchor on ESPN. I think that's a great start for Danny. Looks very comfortable in front of the camera, both on and off the court. It's a different color jersey, but the numbers on it are very significant. Busboom wearing the number 18 because that's the jersey that her idol wore. Allison Weston, when she played here at Nebraska and was winning a national championship back in 1995. And that idol, Allison Weston, went on to be a star for the U.S. national team, winning Olympic medals and one of the big names in Nebraska volleyball. And it took a lot for Busboom. Not real thrilled about it at the beginning of the year. She was the starting center last year, along with Maggie Griffin. And when Holloway won the job, Danny had to put on the red jersey. And has settled very nicely into that role, to say the least. Ultimate team sacrifice. We're tied at 18 now on the service of Jade Machado for UCLA. Net violation on Nebraska. Net violation UCLA. on Nebraska, and the six-point deficit is gone. The Bruins are back on top. It's a 10-3 run right now. Holloway looks to Pavin when they need the big point. That's where they go. And don't forget Sarah Pavin a year ago in the championship match against Washington says, every day I regret that I did not demand the ball more when my team needed me. We were faltering, we were playing timid, we were playing scared, and I didn't do anything about it. And she's lived with that regret every day and is trying to make up for it tonight. 
21 kills so far for Pavin. Spicer. Good coverage. Uh, Holloway got to that one. Merriweather sliding behind. Oh, Holloway took it out of the net to set up stalls. And Rachel Holloway is no longer a freshman. She started this match as a freshman, and now she is playing with veteran savvy out there, very comfortable on the floor. Tremendous emotion, too, after that point. Nebraska back on top by one. The block got a piece of it to slow it down. Pavin went for the kill. Back row, Jordan Larson. Colby Lyman with the coverage. Jump by Holloway, making all the right decisions now. Two national championships, but they thought they should have gotten their third last year. So they started rebuilding, rebuilding their team by forming a pyramid. They knew that something other than talent was missing because they played afraid that night. So they used John Wooden's original pyramid of success, and then Coach Cook commissioned his team to develop their own. The result, a pyramid on nine qualities. Effort, love, selflessness, passion, confidence, integrity, faith, fight, success. They've come up with what they call a new definition for success this season, saying it's not about winning and losing. That's the outcome. It's about those nine qualities and understanding them as a team, and that's what's driven them this year. How about that irony of uh, the Wizard of Westwood possibly helping Nebraska eliminate the Bruins here? The reach of John Wooden so far. Tentacles reaching out into every sport at every level. And that pyramid can be seen throughout the program. On their practice shirts, it says build. On the media guide, the pyramid is on the back. It's seen in their locker room, in the coaches' room. It's influenced their entire season. Spicer dumps it over on two. And the Bruins tie it up again. Big comeback here for UCLA in game four. Trying to extend the match. Haven missed it wide. Bruins. And the Bruins are on top. And right now it's what I call the ultimate points in crunch time. Usually I don't say that until about 25, but right now I think momentum obviously crucial for UCLA to stay alive in this match. Daly on the serve. Stalls with the kill. 15 kills now for Stalls, all of them coming in the last three games. Now anybody can get a kill in the first play of a match. The key, I think, to a champion is can you get a kill in crunch time with everything on the line? We'll see in these next few points. Bus boom, Holloway, Stalls. And the kill. Well, this is coming here on the serve of Sarah Pavin, who rattled off 10 in a row earlier in the match. And because of different matchups in this game with Pavin serving Merriweather on the floor, a better chance of siding out for the Bruins. The ace! The miscommunication in the back row from UCLA. How many times this season did we hear, we'll see you in Omaha? He said we've had to live with it all year long. The problem was we weren't having fun in the beginning of the season. So he said in mid-October, he took his team into his office and said, you know what, it's all on me. I am taking all the responsibility and all the pressure to get us to Omaha. You just play for fun. He said they'd be winning in three games, and after the match in the locker room, he'd ask, did you have fun tonight? And they said no, because they just felt too much pressure. He's used all kinds of tricks to try and keep the pressure off of his players. Stalls gets another kill. And he did things like putting a picture up of Robbie Gordon to talk about fine-tuning like a NASCAR. He had a road to Omaha sign. He even put yo-yos up in the locker room when they were playing a little up and down. Kevin has just been lethal on the serve. Out of the back row, Sather puts an end to it. Good news, bad news, though. They end the run from Pavin, but with the rotation, Merriweather leaves the game. Colby Lyman serving. 
Boy, and again, UCLA up off the bench. Very frustrated with that call. If the ball lands anywhere on the white line or in the blue area of the sport court, it is good. It has to be completely into the gray to be considered an out ball. And Andy Banikowski, what can you do other than shake your head at this point? So frustrated. Nebraska trying to close out the match here in game four. Schwartz serving. Spicer goes to Johnson. Dug up by Schwartz. Holloway looks to Larson. Crushes one down the line. And UCLA trying to do everything it can. That time had Rachel Johnson on the outside, Katie Carter in the middle, trying to mix up the matchups, but the Huskers just too strong and playing on too much confidence right now. Holloway distributing well for Nebraska. Johnson uses the block for the point. Rachel Johnson, point UCLA. Back to third for the Bruins, Valley Spicer. Coming up next, it's ISU Grand Prix of figure skating here on ESPN2. Following the conclusion of our match here. UCLA hoping that it will last a little longer. Sather, plus boom there defensively. With her 28th dig of the match and a kill for Sarah Pavin. Approach out of the back row, stays behind that white three-foot line, and continues to make an impact on all areas of the court. Oscar's two points away from playing for the title. Keel Not yet, Ohio says Rachel, Rachel Johnson. Johnson. Point UCLA in for the Bruins and serving Jordan Smith. Merriweather, all she can do is watch. Jordan Smith will serve. The tape, but Nebraska got a piece of it, says the referee, and the Bruins get the kill. Point UCLA. UCLA digging deep right now, not at all giving up. Watch the serve to go cross court, deep corner area five. Larson. And the kill for Allie Daly. And UCLA's back to within one. The game is to 30, must win by two. Merriweather with 12 kills. The top hitter in the nation on the season, but at 195 tonight, Bruins have rattled off four unanswered points here. Cooper blocked. Holloway goes to Larson through the block, but Spicer keeps it alive. Plus boom to Holloway, they go to Pavin. Spicer again is there. The set to Daly, the tip won't go down. Back to Larson. And UCLA into the net. And it's match point for Nebraska. Right now look for UCLA to go to Allie Daly. She's put them on her shoulders over the last couple points with Merriweather on the bench. Spicer to Daly. And the lift call called on Nebraska. Point for the Bruins. Now Merriweather returns to the court for UCLA. Matched up against Corey Cooper in the front row. Three person serve receive and three hitters for Nebraska. Second match point for the Huskers. to Merriweather. The big hitters taking swings. Larson! Nebraska is moving on to play for the national championship. 